right, so tell me your name. Scott Nelms. Scott Nelms. How yep. long have you been in recovery, Scott? Uh, seven months now, give or take. Um, let me see, January. No, 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 sorry. Seven and a half months. Right, who's counting it, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How'd you get here? How'd you get to recovery? Uh, I mean, yeah, I've been a drug addict my whole life. Um, you know, I was, my mom passed away a few years ago. I mean, I was always an addict before that, but like about five years ago, she passed away. And from that point, I just sort of went off the rails. I mean, like, you know, started really going hard. And uh, yeah, I've been in jail. I've, I've, the last 32 months, maybe 20 of those months I spent in jail. And uh, I got arrested in January this year, and this last time, I, I mean, it just, you know, it did something that the other 900 arrests didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I finally just had that aha moment where I, you know, decided I was going to do something else. Yeah. What did that look like? Going in and out of jail, you know, all the time. Like, going back out to the street, going right back under the bridge that I lived under, which, is, I mean, that's actually where I lived, was under a bridge. And, I mean, it just, uh, I mean, I don't I don't really know how, how to answer that other than to say it just, I mean, I, it was just, I feel inside, you know, and just, uh, you know, I just decided I was done with it. shooting a gram of dope a day for like five years. Like, I mean, like all I could. I mean, you know, just uh, going as hard as anyone could go and still, you know, breathe and was walk. You know? your mom yeah, yeah. I mean, before that, you know, I grew up in a, an addicted family. My mom was an addict, dad, grandma, you know, my uncles all drank themselves to death and, you know, that type of thing. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I was always, I started out drinking and smoking weed and it moved on to painkillers and then box and take to get off that and then uh, but then, yeah when my mom died I just you know, I just went for the hardest thing I could find the thing that would numb my mind the best and I found that it was meth you know. how do you think your mom passing affected you oh it, I mean it just uh, I mean at that at that time it just destroyed me like I was a uh, because of my addiction all those years I was a uh, I mean I was uh, the most selfish human being that I've ever known you know horrible son uh, you know she she died in a nursing home and uh, while she you know, while she laid in there and took her last breath I was in the parking lot of her home doing a shot of dope like I mean I had done I began to shoot when she got sick I, when I found out she was gonna die like I started to dabble, but I mean, when she dies, when I really went crazy. But like the moment she took her last breath, my sister had called that day and said she's going to die. You need to come up here, you know. And I was such an I, mean, I was such a selfish addict at that, you know. That that's just who I always was. I mean, I sat out there instead of spending my last her last moment on earth, you know, holding her hand. I chose to, to shoot dope. You know, it's, it's crazy, man. But, um, Have you had a chance to uh, make any amends for that hurt? No, I mean, where I work now, it's just, I can almost see the graveyard from where I work, where she's buried, and I've never been back there. I mean, I've, uh, no, I, no, I've had no, you know, I've not, not yet. I'm, I'm not that far along my step work. <laughs> I mean, you know, I pray. Yeah, I pray about it, and, uh, Talk to my sister about it. My, I've talked to my housemates about it, you know, but uh, but no, not yet. What do you think she would think and feel about you now? Oh, she, you know, she would just be, uh, you know, over the moon. I mean, it's it's uh, that very idea is what keeps me here. Like when I get discouraged here, I mean, it's kind of hard to live with eight, you know, eight dudes, especially ex addicts, and you know, all these clashing opinions and shit, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, all I got to think of, of when I get discouraged is how she would feel about this, and, you know, I know, you know, I know it would just, you know, it, it would just, uh, make her heart sing, you know what I'm saying, like, she never knew me, you know, clean, you know, from 13 to 46 years old, I, or, well, when she died, which I was 42, so, from from thirteen to till well, from when I was thirteen when she died, like I was an addict, you know. She never saw me be productive. I had, you know, I've got two grown sons. I was I wasn't there for her because of my addiction, 
and she saw all that shit, you know, all that stuff too, and tried to, you know, she tried to support me as best that, uh, you know, a mom can do, but I know I broke her heart. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm positive of that, you know. For sure. Yeah. <clears throat> what are you most excited for? You mean now? Now in recovery? I mean, the, you know, just having a real life, like, this first time in my life I've ever, you know, paid bills and, like, opened a bank account. I'm building my credit up, you know. I, that's something I never even, you know, I never dreamed, you know. Uh, I'm just I'm just excited to see how far I can go with a sober mind. I mean, you know, I've always been an addict, so I've always had low expectations, you know, of myself. I had resigned myself to die these last five years. I don't think that was what I was trying to do, you know, doing all those drugs for so long. But, yeah, and now I got, you know, all the hope in the world. You know, I wake up hopeful instead of, you know, just down in blue all the time. You know. It's awesome, yeah. If you go back and tell your 13-year-old self anything, what would you tell him? Oh, man. That's a... Yeah, that's a tough question. I, uh, you know, as uh, I would, I would imagine, I would just, uh, I would tell him to be, <laughs> to be his own man, not to be such a sheep. You know, that's what I did. I mean, I just followed suit. You know, all my friends in high school. Yeah, that's where my, you know, my partying began was with the older high school kids, just following them. You know, just trying to fit in with them. I guess I would have to tell myself just to, just to, just to be my own man and not to, not to follow but lead, you know, which is something I never did. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Woo.